Research scientist Louise has made rhubarb crumble and custard. What brings that alive is the lovely vanilla in the custard. We've got a lovely crunchy top. I think it's very delicious. It is creamy, it is sharp, it is also sweet. That is a nicely, nicely flavoured, good textured crumble and custard. Is rhubarb crumble and custard good enough to get your place in the next round? I really hope so. British food lover Pam has cooked rhubarb upside down cake with vanilla cream and a rhubarb compote. Stone the crows. I don't think I've tasted anything that good in such an early round for a very, very, very long time. Your sponge is delightfully light. Your cream is packed full of vanilla. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Great flavours in equal amounts. The heat and the warmth, that lovely bit of ginger at the back. Yeah, it's very, very good indeed. How do you like it? Wannabe food writer Dave has pinned his hopes on rhubarb crumble and custard with caramelised rhubarb. The underlying flavour is burnt rhubarb and sugar. Yeah. You do have sweetness and sourness in the rhubarb. I think your custard is packed full of vanilla. It's not bad, Dave. What you've got to hope is not bad is good enough today to get you through. Absolutely. Determined mum of four Denise is pulling out all the stops with an ambitious three-course menu. Tell me what your three courses are, please. Griddled prawns with salsa, and my main will be pork with cider lentils and mustard mash. And for my dessert, that'll be lime and coconut cheesecake with a rum cream. Is, is a number of crowd pleasers going on here, do you think? I sincerely hope so. I mean, I wanted to kind of give you guys a snapshot um, of some of the things that I can actually do. Besides being a mother of four, mm -hmm. you have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. How are you going to cope? How are you going to fit this in if you go through the next round? I'll fit in whatever you want to fit in. I've had to study while having children and working full time. There's an awful lot of things that I've had to manage to do um, in my life. And so long as I've actually got the dedication and the commitment, nothing is um, unachievable as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Denise has to deliver flavour today. Prawns and salsa, the salsa's got to have a punch. And we've then got a rum and lime cheesecake. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a load of boxes lined up here and she's ticking every one. I think I'm going to go out of here a stone heavy. You've got three minutes left. One minute. You're out of time. Time's up. Will Denise's lime and coconut cheesecake with rum cream tip the balance in her favour? I like the flavours. Mm -hmm. That lovely coconut. Cream cheese in there is very, very sweet. We asked for one thing, and that was flavour. And I think you've delivered it today. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. Cleansing lime, going into deeper coconut, going into hint of rum. That is the taste of the Caribbean in a cheesecake. Those flavour combinations are simply, simply superb. <laughs> You've done yourself proud today, haven't you? I'm sure that you're eager, both of you guys have done things by where you've thought, that's perfect. I want to look at things and, and think that's perfect as well. Food like this, at your level, extraordinary. But we've only got one semi-final place. Thank you. I've seen you excited, I've seen you disappointed, I've even seen you angry. How are you right now? A bit nervous, understandably, but, but uh, just trying to feel the, feel the dance. What do you think that you have to do today to stay in the game? 
Um, I think I've got to put forward food that just talks for itself. It's got to look stunning, it's got to taste great, and uh, it's not got to be all fancy and, uh, and techniques in here that they're just not going to see. We've, we've talked before about the kitchen curtain. That's up today, that's up really big, and they need to just see, let the food do the talking, really. What are you actually cooking for us? So I'm doing a, a loin of lamb with red currant and rosemary, um, and turnips, peas, and potatoes do fan. The tart you're making? It's a white chocolate and raspberry tart, but I've tried to sort of, you know, use some techniques, make a dark chocolate pastry, uh, so you've got your white and your dark chocolate and your red of your fruit, just a, a lovely, uh, a lovely look looking little tart. Good on you, James. Thanks, guys. Good in theory. James has decided to show technique, but not make his food very frightening. But he has got lots of stuff going on in this main course. His plate is fairly complicated. My concern for James is still the process. It's this lamb, peas, turnip, potato I can get. But no, we've got a different potato dish. We've got a turnip gratin and we've got a pea puree. Does it need that much? Does it honestly need that much? I think almost I, I use the complexity to, to hide my fear that I'm not doing enough, I'm not good enough. Um, I use complexity to you know, to show the judges I'm doing all these things, look at how much I'm doing, you know. It's important just to choose the right bits and let the food talk for itself, you know. Six minutes to go and a relaxed James. Yeah. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Bloody odd. <laughs> For his dessert, he's made a classic raspberry and white chocolate tart in chocolate pastry. I think this looks really very professional, actually. Whatever faults there were in his main course, his lamb dish, um, I think are actually overshadowed by the, the qualities of this dessert. This is a redemptive pudding. Mm. The cleverest thing about the pudding is the contrast in textures between very very, very crisp and very, very thin chocolate pastry and white chocolate goo. Very impressed by this. Really am. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, really, really well-judged pudding. Lo lovely to eat. Wanted to finish it up. James missed the goal completely with his main course, but put the ball right in the back of the net. And I'll never do a football metaphor ever again. Good pud. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one to call. I'm not. I'm certainly not confident of going through. Um, I think if it had gone well and I'd done everything right, I think it would have been like, well, yeah, I've got a good chance. But uh, I just have no idea. Really, just in the dark now. It's going to be a nervous afternoon waiting for the judgment. The contestants must cook a two-course meal of their own design. The judges are looking for imaginative dishes, well executed and well presented. Only one will win a place in Friday's quarter-final. In round one, Gavin impressed with his spark. Now he's pulling out all the stops and cooking two ambitious dishes. Gav, we've obviously yeah. got a risotto. Yeah. What's that going with? Well, there's uh, scallops with a saffron sauce and pear and parma chicken with uh, a risotto. How much of these two courses have you cooked before? Um, I've done the scallops once. Apart from that, I haven't. Gavin, you're either very, very gifted or you're flying by the seat of your pants. Well, I'm calm for it, though, aren't I? Here's a man who I think is winging it. But he's winging it well. I'm impressed. Some of these combinations there. We've got a risotto going with the main. We've also got pears that have crushed basil all over them. Now, there's a lot of flavours going on there for one poor chicken to cope with. You're a quarter of the way through. You have three quarters left. Aspiring celebrity chef Luciana has done well so far, and she's showing her versatility by choosing a French-inspired menu. Luciana, head down as we're used to seeing you. Mm -hmm. Concentrating. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you concentrating on? What are we going to get? You're going to get a salmon, crab and leek timbali, and it's with an orange hollandaise and cucumber sauce and new potatoes and for dessert, a blackberry summer stack pudding with amaretto in it. Luciana, look, I, I adore amaretto. Yeah. Are we seriously going to put 300 millilitres? Oh, no, no, no. I just wanted to make sure that there was enough. How much do you reckon you're going to use out of that? Just 
just a good splash. You can drink the rest, um, Greg, because I know you love it. The challenge definitely pushes on very hard. My concern right now is there's so many variables. That tin barley, if that's, that fish goes overcooked, it's going to go all mushy like horrible scrambled egg. But the dessert of the blackberry steak with a brioche with amaretto cream, I think that could be glorious. Just over 15 minutes, OK? Maxine has faced criticism for her generous portions, but is determined to prove she's capable of a lighter touch. Maxine, why is there such a huge transition between the style of food you were cooking yesterday and the style of food you're cooking today? I don't think there is. We've got a nice portion-sized piece of fish. And yesterday we had the Big biggest dessert. bowl of spaghetti. Because I have taken on board your criticism about my portion control. Maxine, can I ask you one serious question? Yes. Do you want to go any further in this competition? Yes, I do. Are you but... going to make us smile? <laughs> I hope so. I said to you yesterday I was really worried about her. Do you know what? I like what she's doing today. Simple sea bass, longestein sauce, a really lovely butter. Fantastic. With the little strawberry mousse and the way she was making it, that looks absolutely delightful. She's got a, she's got a, a delicate touch. For her main course, Luciana has made salmon and crab timbal with orange and cucumber hollandaise, followed by a blackberry amaretto summer stack pudding served with amaretto cream. Mm. I would struggle to eat all of that. The salmon, I think, in that style will become too much for me in the end, okay. even bordering on slightly sickly. This doesn't take away from the effort and work that's got into it, which I really, really appreciate. Luciana, it's not offensive, but it's not the sort of food that I'm going to go out and pay for. No. Now, I think that looks delightful. Stone the crows. If I eat a better dessert in two months, I will feel myself a very fortunate man. Oh, that is... That is a thing of beauty. Why should we put you through? Because you are going to see some really good stuff from me. You know what happens. You have to sit it out, and we talk about you at length. So thank you for your hard work. We'll see you in a little while. You have two and a half minutes left. Everything rides on their final dishes. Only one of them can become a semi-finalist. Time is racing. Your time is up, ladies and gentlemen. Get that last thing on your plate. Get on your plate and we're done. Can Louise's final dish of chocolate fondant with cherries in a brandy sauce sweeten the judges and tip the balance in her favour? Look at that. Still soft in the middle. Rich, thick, dark chocolate, soured, sweetened cherries. Out of 10, I'll give you 11. Fantastic. Love it. 90% of your food is absolutely faultless. But is it exciting enough? I try to focus on rather than going over the top. Today, I didn't want to do that. I was a bit worried I might mess things up. We've got through without much criticism, but have we had enough praise? No one can start me off now. Mm, it means so much. Helen's starter is a seasonal salad of broad beans, courgettes, feta and mint. Salty feta cheese balanced perfectly with the sweetness of the broad beans, but it is very oily. Salty feta, sweet broad beans and the mint. It's a really good combination. It is still slightly greasy though. Helen's main is roast Moroccan lamb with couscous and harissa sauce. 
What will the judges make of it? There is more garlic in there than on Garlic Island on Garlic Day in Garlicsville on Garlic Holiday. I think the idea of it is a good idea, but it needs to be honed and it needs to become something very, very small and very, very sexy. All Helen's hopes are now riding on a summer fruit compote with scented cream. Plump, juicy, the cream afterwards, easing off the sharpness and the sweetness. So nice, it actually um, gets me quite emotional. I think that's absolutely lovely. Really good. Helen, how are you feeling? Not great. You're all right. OK. Let's talk about your very elegant dessert. That is seriously good, and should my friend here not have to taste it, I'd be eating the rest of it. And I don't like desserts, Ben. Phew. Oh, that makes an old veg man very happy. If you weren't to get through, Ben, would you now just go back to your cheese shop and that's it? I, I need to express my creativity through my food and uh, it's something I've got to face at some stage. Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. Lois, are you on a voyage of discovery? I yeah. Are you hoping to discover yourself? I do lack a certain amount of self-confidence and sometimes I need a, a nice bit of encouragement. I'll give you some encouragement. Yeah. Chef thought you were great. <laughs> Once he got you to shut up, you were very good. <laughs> Despite Lois's lack of self-belief, the judges still have confidence in her ability. Yesterday, Lois cooked really well. In the kitchen today, she cooked really well. And that gives me hope that Lois can really cook and deliver us really good dishes. We have five minutes left. That's it. Time's up. For her main, Lois has cooked chicken with saffron sauce and butternut squash. Dessert is roasted fig with phyllo pastry and a pomegranate sauce.